Okay, so today we're going to look at solving trigonometric equations. So if we look at this first example, um, it says find all the solutions for when sine angle equals a half. So you're trying to find essentially what angle equals a half. So when they ask you, you need to go, what can I put there? We'll give the answer of a half. Now, when they look, they state here, what they're saying is the angle is an element between zero and four pi. So you have to put all the answers in that occur between zero and four pi with what angle gives a half. Now, if we think about our um, sine graph, so we've just learned how to draw them. So I've drawn one here. So we can see we've got, oh, we go up, we go down and around. And we do one cycle, because this graph is just a basic sine graph. So we do one cycle in two pi. So when we're asked to go up to four pi, we're gonna see two cycles go around four pi. So if you were thinking about it graphically, um, and they ask you, when does it equal a half? So we could say, look, there's a half on the y-axis. So what we're saying, if we drew a line through there, like you can see I've gone through in the green, you can see that line, the half line, crosses through my purple graph four times. So we're going to have four answers to this question. It's like, when does sine equal a half? There's four times it equals a half between zero and four pi. So what we're going to do is we think about, we're going to find the first solution and we find that from our exact knowledge thing. So if you think about it, we're starting at zero and we're heading out around the, the thing. So what angle um, do we know um, um, equals a half? So if we think of our exact um, knowledge of our exact values uh, we have we know that sine pi on 6 or sine 30 equals a half so if we had a little pointer finger down square root of 1 is 1 over 2 so it's sine pi on 6 so we know that when we have pi on 6 here the sine value is equal to a half so there, the second solution we'll think about by the unit circle, we know if we're at pi and we go back pi on six, we'll get the same value. So the second solution we've got by going um, sine, and we know it's the same as if we say pi minus the angle is the same as sine angle. That's what I've just shown you there in the blue. So we can say that sine pi minus pi on 6 is the same as sine pi on 6. So at the moment, and if you work that out, if you change the pi to 6, it would be 6 over 6, and then you minus 1. So we're saying sine pi minus 6. Well, that's the same as saying sine, that would be 5 pi on 6. Okay, so at the moment we've got two. The first one happened at pi on six. The second one happened at five pi on six. Okay, now let's keep. Now, if we go to get the third solution, if you think about our um, unit circle, we would have gone, so we've already gone round two pi and we're going to do our next um, our next trip around the circle. So we've gone all the way around once, sorry, we've gone 2 pi, and now we head off again. Now, so if we head off again, 2 pi plus another pi on 6, we're going to head back here, yeah? And if we kept on going, it would be, kept on going round to there would be 3 pi, so just a little bit short of getting around there would be our other solution so you can see i've written that here so the first one is 2 pi plus pi on 6 so if you actually worked out what 2 pi um if you turned in 6 so 2 pi in terms of 6 would be 12 
high over six, that's the same as saying two. So if you add another one, that's where I'm getting this 13 pi on six. So 13 pi on six is the same as pi on six. So there's my third solution. So that's occurring at um, 13 pi on six. First one was pi on six. Second one was five pi on six. 13. And then the fourth one would be just short of three pi. So you can see I've done that here, three pi minus pi on six. Now, if you had three sets of six, you'd have 18 um, sixths. So three pi is the same as saying 18 pi over six. Okay, so if we minus one away, you see we get that 17 pi on six. So there's our other one is 17 pi on six. So once you've sort of worked all that out, you're pretty much saying the solution. So the solution to when does sine equal a half when you are told to go between 0 and 4 pi, here's your four answers. We're going to say um, pi on 6, 5 pi on 6, 13 pi on 6, and 17 pi on 6. So what I wanted to bring to your attention is... Once you've got these first two, which we got through our unit circle knowledge and exact values, you can always get the next ones by adding a period. So because this is a basic sine graph, see up here, the period is 2 pi. So if you add 2 pi to pi on 6, can you see you will get 13, which you get that second answer. If I add 2 pi, sorry, that third answer, I add 2 pi to this 5 on 6 you can see I get that fourth answer so um, you can get the third and fourth solution by adding a period so I'm just saying to be careful because it might not be 2 pi depends what the period is but this is a basic sine graph so it um, was 2 pi for this one so you can add it so that's how you find the period the period if you remember you get 2 pi and you divide it by n n's the number in front of the angle so in this case it's 1 so 2 pi divided by 1 okay. so let's go on to some more examples so find two values of x when sine x equals negative 3 so point sorry negative point 0.3 and they're saying between the range of here and here when this is not an exact value, so 0.3 is negative 0.3 is not an exact value. It's not like a half, so it's not 0 0.5. I can't work this out. So when it's one of those, you will have your calculator and you just need to pop it in. So if you look here, I put solve sine x equals negative 0.3 comma x. And I put in this little, remember the line, because we can add that in. It's in, under the control equal button. And I can pop that in and I can put the restriction in. So it's only going to give me the answer between what I need it to be because essentially the sine graph could go on forever. So there'd be multiple, multiple answers. So they're restricting and saying, just find the ones in between there and there. So then you'll get this answer here. All right, let's move on and we'll do a few more practice questions without the calc. So find all the values of the angle between 0 and 360. So remember, this is another way of saying between 0 and 2 pi. So you really you're doing one lap of a circle, unit circle, for which cos equals three square root 3 over 2. Now, you know from your exact values, if you're going to get the square root 3, you would have your ring finger down. So it's... Um, uh, you're going to because you're going to go the square root of the right finger over two, so that gives me um, 30 degrees. So you know cos 30, or if you want to talk in radians, um, cos pi on six gives root three on two. So you know the first answer. So we've got the positive one. Now when else is cos positive? Well, we know it's positive down in this quadrant down here, in the fourth quadrant. So we're going to find that one as well. So we would have, um, it's when you've got 2 pi minus pi on 6. So you can get the next one. So if you had 2 pi in 6, that would be 12 pi over 6. 
and if you minus 1, and this is how we get 11 pi. So we can either answer it in degrees, so remember pi on 6 is 30 degrees, or we could answer it in um, in, degree, uh, in radians, so 11 pi on 6. So if you've got, remember this is the 360 mark, and if you minus 30 degrees, you'll get the 330. And there's that second answer. Um, when we don't need to do any more, because we have to stop once we got to three, going around the unit circle and we got to 360. Okay, so let's do another one. When does um, sine equal, at what angle will give sine to be equaling a negative half? So, you think of your exact values, you know that sine 30 gives it half, but if we were thinking of the unit circle, that sine is negative down in these quadrants. So we need to go pi plus the angle, so sine pi plus 30, or here 2 pi minus 30. They're the ones where it will give a negative answer. So we can say pi plus angle equals negative sine, what I'm just written there, and sine 2 pi minus the angle will also give the same value. So I've just changed pi to be, so that's still, sorry, that's still pi there, and I've added pi on 6, but I'm talking in degrees now, so I know it's 30 and 330. Just uh, depends what they ask. If they ask, this was, sorry, abbreviate, this is continuation from the question on the other page, and they said between 0 and 360. So because they're saying between 0 and 360, we'll put our answers in degrees. So 180 plus 30 is 210, 360 minus, so this is 360. If you're minus 30, that's how I got 330. And if I've got 180 and I add 30, that's how I get 210. Okay, so that's where we're getting that answer from. Okay, the last one for this question is when they want me to find what cos of what angle will give negative um, 1 over root 2. Now, remember we got caught out a little bit today. We know from our little, little hand trick that we get cos 45 to be root 2 on 2. And remember I said you may need to be aware that that's the same as saying 1 over root 2. So we're going to say, so we know cos 45 gives this positive answer. So now once again, we're thinking when does cos give a the same thing but a negative? Well, cos is negative um, out in this uh, second and third quadrant, isn't it? So we're saying it was, you get, when you have 45, you get cos to be... Um, 1 over root 2 so we want it to be negative so it'll be this 180 minus 45 or 180 plus 45 so you can see those two answers over here um, over here so we see that so our two answers are when it is 135 or 235 Okay, now finally we're getting a little bit in the more difficult questions. And now we're getting asked to solve for when sine. Now they're asking me when two of the angles will equal negative, three on, um, negative root 3 on 2. So what we're going to do is we are going to change it to look like what we've been doing. So instead of saying that it's two angle, I'm just going to say let two angle equal um, x okay so I'm going to change that to an x and solve it like it was like that first so I'm going to say all right sine x when does sine x equal root 3 on 2 and we have to remember that they're setting it between here um, between pi negative pi and pi so what they mean by that <laughs> when you get that, is if you had your axes, and so if you were doing your sine graph and off you go like that, well they actually want the answers before. So they want you to start at um, negative pi, 
and then go up to pi. So it might be like that, yeah? So anyway, so just be careful with that. So let's get back to here. Let's find out when does sine x equal root three? So we know that sine pi on three equals square root three on two. So we know that from our exact values. We, so I know that answer. So we want to know, but sorry, we want to know when it's negative. So from that we know, so when is sine negative? If we think about our unit circle, sine is negative down here in these quadrants. So I want to do pi on three. So I actually want to do um, when we have pi plus the pi on three, that will give me the negative sign and also two pi minus pi on three. That will also give me the two answers. So therefore I can say at the moment sine x equals negative square root three on two when x equals five pi on three. Oh, sorry, I might do the first one first. So four pi on three. So four, four thirds. Or, so that was this one here, down here. Or when x is five pi on three, this other one over here, because remember two pi would be six pi on three, and then you minus one, okay? So we've got that, but we need to keep sort of going, because we, all right, so we've said that, um, but the question, even if we're still assuming it's sine x equals negative three, root three on two, but they've, they're they asking me when x is an element between negative pi and pi. So what you've done, gone is gone forwards, you're in the ones up here in the positive x-axis. So the way we can get around that is doing like that trick before where I said I'm going to add a period in. So if I go to get, so if I write, um, so you can see the period here, it's a normal basic graph, so the period equals 2 pi. Okay, so if I write my answers here, I can get other answers by adding or subtracting just 2 pi. So say I subtract 2 pi from this answer, which remember 2 pi would be like subtracting 6 pi on 3. So if I subtract that, that would get me this one, it would get that one to minus 6, so I'd have negative 2 pi on 3. If I subtracted um, 2 pi from this answer, I would get just negative pi on 3. Okay, so I can get a couple answers and if I wanted to go um, further up, so say you wanted to get the higher ones, so if I add 2 pi, so that would be um, 10 pi on 3. If I added um, 2 pi to this one, uh, we would get 11 pi on 3. Okay, so here I can get a few more answers. Okay, and why do we need to do that? Because we're going to have to make sure we've got a few because everything's going to change now. So I'm going to go back to, we've got a few answers up there. So if I just summarize our answers, just make them a bit neater. So I've got this one, I've got negative pi on three, I've got four pi on three, five pi on three. I've I'm going to leave these ones. I know it's out of my range at the moment, but it might not be when in the long run. So we'll put a few answers there. So we've got a few answers for solving this situation. Okay. So what, but we know it was actually sine um, two feeder. When does that equals negative square root three on two? 
and they said when the element, when the angles between pi and negative pi, sorry, and pi. Okay, so what you can do when there's a two there, or whatever number is here in front, oops, sorry, um, there, you can get all your answers for that you had before and you can times the two on the denominator down here. And that's how we can find our answer, our other answers to our, so we're gonna times all that by two and that's gonna give us the real solutions to this original problem. So if I do that, what I end up with, so my answers, would be when, so the angles are either negative two pi on six, negative pi on six, four pi on six, um, five pi on six, 10 pi on six, and 11 pi on six. Okay, so, but let's have a look. If we have pi, negative pi and pi, that would actually be, because we're all talking about 6 down here, I'm going to say negative 6 pi on 6, or this would be positive 6 pi on 6. So I don't need to go past that. So if you look, um, so that one's going past it, so I don't need those two answers. And um, Okay, so our actual answer ones that we actually need will just be these ones in here because they fit within our category. Now, if you have a look, negative 2 pi on 6, that can be simplified to negative pi on 3. So we probably might do that. Um, I can't simplify pi on 6, so I'll leave that one. 4 pi on 6 can go to 2 pi on 3. And 5 pi on 6, you can't do anything. So that's where that those answers will come up. So you need to simplify. They are big problems. They will take a while. You just need to be patient and work through it slowly. They will be worth big marks on a test.